let's take a look at what a pressure volume loop looks like. What this is is a plot of the pressure inside the ventricle versus the volume of blood inside the ventricle. Now, we do studies with uh, dogs and sheep, so we met, represent it in milliliters, but we also do studies with mice and rats, so we represent it in microliters. But at any rate, this is the pressure volume loop. This is a graph of the pressure in the ventricle and the volume of the ventricle at various times. Let's pick a time. Let's pick a time at the beginning of contraction right here. This is the time when the heart is the biggest it gets. We call it the end diastolic volume. And the pressure is fairly low. But the pressure, the ratio of pressure to volume, gives you a static measure of compliance of the ventricle, an extremely important parameter. Compliance of the ventricle, the lucitropic property, tells you how easily the ventricle fills. And please remember that 50% of the mortality of heart disease arises from abnormal compliance, not abnormal systolic force of contraction. We also know at this point that the, when the ventricle begins to contract, the mitral valve closes, and as the ventricle contracts, the pressure goes up in the ventricle, up, 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 but it doesn't change volume because the aortic valve is closed on one side, the mitral valve is closed on another side, and if the ventricle is contracting and no blood can leave, then it doesn't change volume, but the pressure goes up. So there we see the so-called isovolumetric period of contraction. And at this point, the pressure in the ventricle exceeds the pressure in the aorta, which is held by the recoil of the aorta, the, the aorta and the aortic valve opens. Then we see the ventricular pressure goes up a little, but the volume changes a great deal. The distance between there and there is the stroke volume, which can be measured very accurately by a pressure volume loop. So the pressure volume loop gives you the, an estimate of the static compliance or lucitropic property of the ventricle, and it gives you stroke volume. And if you multiply stroke volume by heart rate, of course, it gives you cardiac output. Very important parameters, which if affected by drugs or disease, translate to morbidity and mortality. So there you see the ventricle at the time the aortic valve opens, pumping blood into the aorta, the ventricle gets small, the aortic pressure goes, the aortic and ventricular pressures go up a little, and at this point, the ventricle begins to relax. Calcium is driven from the troponin C back to the sarcoplastic reticulum as a result of energy utilization, which we're going to come to very shortly. At this point, this is the end systolic pressure volume relationship. This says that the ventricle is this has this volume and it has this pressure. At this point, the aortic valve closes because ventricular pressure plummets below aortic pressure. So the aortic valve closes, but because the aortic valve is closed on one side and the mitral valve has not yet opened on the other side, pressure falls, but you see there's no change in volume. This is called isovolumetric relaxation. No change in volume, but big change in pressure. Then we see the mitral valve opens and the ventricle begins to fill. As the ventricle fills, the ventricle gets bigger, but the pressure inside gets bigger because otherwise it wouldn't fill. Now the slope of this line gives you the dynamic lucitropic property of the heart. This tells you dynamically how easily the ventricle fills, and this is the static pressure volume point. So we're interested in the lucitropic properties, which we interrogate by the slope of this line, and the static property, which is the end systolic, which is the end diastolic pressure volume relationship. So do you see how important the pressure volume loop is in characterizing the ventricular function? Here we have the stroke volume, there we have the end diastolic pressure. And as we'll show you, if you generate a family of these pressure volume curves, there's a method of extrapolating uh, this point to a baseline, which gives you uh, the contractility.
So again, this pressure volume loop is enormously valuable in interrogating many properties of the cardiovascular system.